In this video, I'm going to show you how I turn this normal fat tire e-bike into an absolute monster with over 9,000 watts of power. This whole build started with the battery. I was going to buy something on Facebook Marketplace and the seller also was selling this recalled UPP battery for pretty cheap. So I decided to buy it and take it apart and try and find out why it was recalled. Right away I noticed that it's built with no cell spacers and all of the wires are getting pinched up in this corner, both of which can cause some major problems. So I decided I'm going to salvage the cells from this pack and maybe use them in another battery. However, I made the mistake of grinding way too much on both sides of the cell, which completely removed the layer of nickel revealing the steel underneath that I can't spot weld to. The only thing I can use them for now is stuff that only takes one cell at a time, like this flashlight. So it looks like I'm going to need to buy some new cells for this battery. I decided to use Samsung 30T cells, since I can get them for pretty cheap and they have 35 amps of discharge current. The first thing I did was figure out how I could configure the cells so they could fit in this plastic battery case. After that I assembled two sets of spacers to fit the cells. I cut out some 0.1 millimeter copper in this shape so I can start connecting the cells. Once I reached the end, I had to figure out how to connect these two groups of cells, so I cut out a cardboard template. I'm going to use this template to help me cut some 0.15mm copper. For all these sections, I decided to use thicker copper since I don't have nearly as much width as on the bottom of the pack. The other side was pretty much the same, but I didn't need that really long connection. To connect the wires, I first soldered them to some copper and now I'm going to spot weld them on. After that, I soldered on the balance wires. You definitely have to get more creative when working on triangle packs versus rectangle packs. The BMS had two spots to solder the wires on, so I ended up doing this. After that, I added some smaller wires to connect to the charging port. At this point, I also realized there's no way I was going to make this fit with these screw posts in here, so I just removed them. While I was taping up the pack, I realized I had way too much slack in the balance wires, so I just curved them like this. After adding fish paper and more tape, the battery was ready to go together. However, I realized it would probably rattle around, so I added some foam on one side of the battery. I decided to zip tie it together like this, so I didn't have a bunch of zip ties around the outside of the pack. After adding some hot glue to seal it up, the battery was done. After I built the battery pack, I started looking for a bike to put it on. This bike caught my eye because it has a massive frame triangle, so I know the battery will fit, and it has these massive knobby tires, so it's going to have a ton of traction. The only problem with the bike is that the frame is cracked right here, but it's in a pretty good spot to crack because the seat post should reinforce it fine, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. For the controller, I got a Fardriver 72340 from Econic Cycles. This controller is a perfect match for this battery because the controller can pull 120 amps and the battery cells can output 140 amps. I like how high quality the packaging is for these controllers. You can tell you're buying a good product. It's got some weight to it, so you know it can handle some power. When I put the battery in the frame, I had plenty of room to mount the controller under it. I then put an XC90 connector on the battery wires and made this tiny little harness to connect it to the controller. To mount the controller, I just bent some aluminum pieces and bolted them right on. After I mounted the controller, I started working on the wiring harness. The only problem I had was that the brake lever that came with the bike didn't have a switch, and it was aluminum, so I couldn't really stick the magnet onto it to use the little Hall Effect switch, so I decided I'm just going to use this brake lever I already had that had a switch in it. For the motor, I went for a QS205 5T for more torque. This motor is ordered straight from QS Motors, so it's the real deal. However, they couldn't lace it with a big enough rim, so I'm going to have to order some spokes and do it myself. I decided to keep the stock brakes since I can use Regen. One note before putting on the freewheel is that you want to use some anti-seize lubricant and put it on these threads if you ever plan on taking the freewheel off. 
Because this motor is a 5T motor being fed 340 phase amps, it's going to have a ton of torque, so I'm going to make some custom torque arms. I got the slots cut out on the torque arms, and now the motor fits in there really good, but there's still a bit of a gap on both sides, so I'm going to take the torque arms that came with the motor, put them in there like that, and I'll probably cut this part off too because I don't really need that. I was planning on installing a chain tensioner just like on the stunt e-bike, but the chain actually fits perfectly. And I don't think I'm going to be pedaling very much, so it shouldn't really stretch out. Once I bolted on the motor, I connected it to the controller to run the auto learn. At first it didn't work because the motor is a 16 pole pair motor, but the controller was set to 6 pole pairs, so it just spun forever and it didn't auto learn. Once I fixed that, it worked great. The next step is to lace this rim to this hub. However, this rim only has 32 holes while the hub has 36 holes, so I'm going to have to order a new rim. This is annoying because it probably won't match the front rim, but I think it'll be fine. After looking around for a bit, I found this rim that should work perfect. To calculate what length spokes I need, I first took all the measurements of the QS205 motor and put them into the Grin Technology Spoke Calculator. I then put in all the measurements of the rim and it gave me 195 millimeter spoke length. I decided to go with the two cross pattern on the spokes so it can handle more torque. While I'm waiting for the rim and the spokes, I have some other stuff I can work on, like making this rear brake fit. It's not aligned at all, as you can see, so I'm going to have to put some spacers in here. I also am going to shorten up this motor cable because it's so long and I don't think I'll be able to wrap it around anything to like tuck it in there without being in the way. Since the controller is barely thin enough to fit right here without interfering with the cranks, I decided to run the phase wires like this. Here's how it turned out. Because the wires are aluminum and the lugs are copper, I decided to crimp them and solder them. I decided to add another piece to the torque arms, right here, to make sure they're absolutely as strong as possible. Here's the finished torque arms and spacers, I think they turned out pretty good. I just got the spokes, they seem super high quality and they're thicker than the spokes the bike had before. I finally got the rim, so it's time to lace it to the motor. Because the spokes were attaching to the rim at an angle, I had to cut out some sections of the outside layer of the rim to make them fit. I just got the rim laced on the motor. The first thing I did was put all the spokes into the motor. After that, I put the motor flat on the ground with a piece of foam so it won't fall over, and then I put the rim around it. After that, I put all the nipples in, just like that, and I started with them not very tight, and then I tightened them all up so you couldn't see the threads, and then I felt how loose the rim was and it needed to be tightened more, so I went around and did four turns. It still needed more, so I did four more turns, and it was almost there, so I did two turns, and now it's pretty good. I learned my lesson on the stunt e-bike when all the spokes loosened over time, so right away I'm going to put some thread locker on all these nipples, one at a time, to try and not ruin the balance of this wheel. Because I did all that cutting on the rim, I decided I was going to put a layer of duct tape around to protect it, but then I realized if I did a layer of gray duct tape, then you could see it through all the holes on the rim. So I first did a layer of black duct tape upside down, and then I did a layer of gray duct tape to hold it all in place. After that, I installed the tire on the rim and then installed the whole thing on the bike and it was time for the first ride. Actually, I'm not going to lie, this isn't my first ride. I've been riding this bike a bunch. The first thing I noticed though, when I actually did my first ride, was just how light it feels. Because basically all the weight is this hub motor, and that's weighing the back pretty low. So it kind of just feels like a normal bike. The front is just insanely light. It literally just feels like, just like I said, a normal bike. And this means you can just pedal it, ride it normally. Let me try a wheelie. <laughs> oh, not quite. <laughs> but yeah, when I felt that, I knew this thing was going to be an absolute rocket. I have mode 1 set to be a thousand watts, so it's just like a normal e-bike. It still gets up and goes pretty good, but mode 2 is where it gets crazy. 
half power, 4,300 watts. It's already trying to throw you off. That's half power, and it would already just destroy any other normal e-bike on the market. And you already got to be careful when you're launching it. Like, it does not want you on it. <laughs> And then we get to mode three, which is just dangerously fast. It's already trying to power wheelie up to like 30 miles an hour. It's ridiculous. I had to get out of the neighborhoods for mode three because I don't think my neighbors would appreciate me doing over 50 miles an hour down the streets. Yeah, mode 3 is ridiculous. Let me try a little bit of gravel. Oh. <laughs> it just does not spin at all. The amount of surface area on these tires is just ridiculous. And to launch it, you gotta basically be over the handlebars. Let me try like a normal lean forward launch, see if I can do it. No. <laughs> try that again. Yeah, there we go. Let me try some high speed wheelies. While I'm here, I might as well hit the highway. <laughs> That's one thing I definitely like about this bike, is that I used a continuous BMS, so you can just go full throttle for like probably two minutes before it got too hot versus like the ego bike where it's only 10 seconds of full throttle i think i'm definitely going to build all my other bikes like that in the future Oh man, it's definitely not a jumper. This gravel's a bit slicker. Let me try that. Nope, it still hooks super good. I'm definitely going to pop these tires if I ride around here for too long. I don't really trust this back brake to do really big wheelies since it's not hydraulic. But on a steep hill like this, it's so easy to wheelie and just hold it right at the bounce point. The squeaking noise in this clip are the rear spokes being loose. It took like seven rounds of tightening all the spokes to finally get the wheel to be broken in where the spokes wouldn't squeak like that. Time for the top speed run. One thing that could be better on this bike is the regen. I can only turn up to 15 amps, which is helpful, but it's not going to replace the brakes like on some of my other bikes.
Right after I finished this bike, it snowed a few inches, so you know I had to try it out. The grip is absolutely crazy. It rides through the snow like it's not even there. I took the bike out to explore some sandbars and I found this really good one that's pretty flat and it has really nice fine sand. So I made a racetrack. Once you get going like 15 miles an hour, it pulls just like it's on concrete. I'm really happy with how this bike turned out. It really doesn't even feel like you're riding an e-bike. It feels like you're riding a normal bike with like speed hacks or something. It's just ridiculous. Well, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.